Hello, I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. Back in the 90s, low-budget specialist Roger Corman and burned a chang I don't know how to pronounce his name. Both of which are responsible for the 2005 Fantastic Four films and its sequel. They were hired to create a low-budget film for our fabulous family of four. Production began December 92 and only took 25 days to shoot, but eventually it became to be known that the film was never meant to be released, and even the cast and crew had no idea it would never get released. But of course, things have their way of eventually getting released, whether it's legal or not. So, with that being said, and the simple fact that my poll on Twitter gave me the lack of a choice of doing this review, with no further ado, let's bring to you the 1994 unreleased Fantastic Four film. We begin in school as our main hero, Reed Richards, corrects the teacher. 792.458. Thank you, Reed. Nerd! After class, Reed argues with Victor over formulas, and we go to the Storm boarding home, and we meet a young Susan and Johnny Storm. You okay? You're not gonna miss is this going to turn into one of those nasty stories where the girl that is 10 years younger than the man falls in love with him because it's like a child crush type of romance? Yeah, it is. Victor and Reed head straight to work as the storm begins and the systems end up overheating, causing an explosion and what looks like Victor's death, but in turn just happens to be severe burns, while Ben Grimm is slightly injured. We jump to 10 years later where Ben agrees to be Reed's pilot, but now they just need a crew. Storm. Johnny and Susan go to outer space with us. Well, I don't know, dear. You'll have to ask them. <laughs> it then takes the power of boners to finally get Reed to agree to let the Storm siblings join the crew. Did you? The Fantastic Four. Roll credits! We see an ominous figure speaking to men about a diamond before a troll thingy also sniffs out the diamond. Ben rudely walks into a blind girl breaking her statue, and you see an instant connection. Reed shows our group the diamond everyone wants as Reed goes into emo mode and his friends have his back. Honestly, am I still the only one that thinks this relationship is kind of nasty? It may be the father in me. But you're ten years older than her! You're disgusting, you f fucking sick fuck! We follow our blind woman from earlier who is being stalked by the creepy troll. The troll then sneaks in and swaps the diamond with a fake diamond which is good to the ominous villain's plants. We then finally head to space and it's not long before they end up having to fight the storm and crash and they finally get hit with their powers. Our heroes of course survive and feel no pain, but as they question things, Johnny sneezes a fire, Susan turns invisible, and Reed stretches to save Susan from killing herself. Reed tries to calm the other three down, but of course, our villain is not happy in any way that they survived. Our creepy troll demands the blind girl be kidnapped to become his queen. Cops come and notice a change in Ben. What kind of a thing have I turned into? You're a puppet! 
Reed promises to get help as our quartet are then put through blood sample after blood sample and test after test, all while Doom's men are sent to talk to the jeweler. The four feel as if the help they are getting is not real help and they decide to break out. The jeweler refuses to give the diamond to Doom's men, which Doom says he will handle personally. Our quartet make their move by knocking out guards and they find a computer but not a lot of information. Our heroes finally meet Doom face to face. We're going home. So rude of you. After all the trouble, I want you to feel at home. And you're running off like naughty little children. I just had to laugh that. Yeah, well, who asked you, you overgrown tin can? You know, I seem to recall yet another group of four that also deal with a specific someone wearing a tin grin. It's the Ninja Turtles. Doom is not pleased with the Force choice and wanting to leave and sends his men to attack them, which does not end well for some of them, as they fight their way through his building. Reed does more blood tests, and after a revelation during Susan's shy rant that everyone's powers seem to play off of their flaws. Ben, of course, upset that he is forever stuck, and we see his depression as the thing roams the street, scaring everyone he comes across, until he meets the jeweler's men, and the thing meets face to face with the jeweler. At least you still have pants. For now. The team contemplates how Doom can possibly know about the diamond and a brainstorm lets Reed figure out that Victor is alive and that he is Doom. Doom then heads to the sewers and attacks Jeweler's men with his own men and the Jeweler tries to use Alicia as bait. You touch it and she dies. So? I mean it. Please, don't let me stop. Damn, why is Doom such a dick in this movie? I like it. The Thing steps in to try to save Alicia, and her cries of love force him to stop, and he quickly returns to normal, making him have to retreat, Ben's anger turning him back into the Thing. Doom contacts the rest of the four and shows them the power of his weapon before giving them 12 hours to give up. They instead choose to unite as four. Our four heroes head to Doom's place, and they are caught by a beam, stopping them in their tracks. We then get the typical villain banter before Doom begins to drain everyone's energy, only for Reed to stretch his foot to set them free. Our heroes take down Doom's men and Torch blazes up and heads after the laser. Doom then comes face to face with Reed who knocks him a couple of times till he eventually falls over the edge. Torch battles back the destructible laser in a semi-decent CGI, and we jump to a wedding of Reed and Susan, and the movie ends with a rubber hand wave. go the movie that was never supposed to be released but ended up getting released anyway in the future i will probably do more twitter polls so if you want to follow me to be a part of those polls come and follow me on over at twitter next week we're going to get into another comic book that is one of my personal favorites two-face crime and punishment I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome.